If you have a laptop that's relatively new, you're going to find that Microsoft has shoved its hand far too much down your manufacturer's throat, forcing them to replace the right control key with the most useless key ever designed by mankind, the Copilot key. Most likely, you would have wanted to rebind this key, but then you couldn't find a way, or you found a way that was too cumbersome, perhaps using tools that you would have never heard of before, like key D and whatnot, right? So, in order to avoid all that, today I am going to save you and force Microsoft to stop gagging your manufacturer's throat and give you back control of the Copilot key. So, let's begin. The first thing that you need to understand is that the Copilot key isn't quite what you think it is. You might think that it's one key, but then no, it's actually one key that's wearing a disguise, right? It's wearing a disguise and it's actually behaving as three keys being simultaneously pressed. Huh, that's kind of weird. Well, let me show you. This is a program called WEV, okay? It's basically XEV, but then for Wayland. So if I type WEV on my keyboard, okay, and I hit enter, it's going to open a window that looks like this. Now, as you can see, on the left is the terminal, which is actually displaying WEV. Now, if I press the Copilot key right now, okay, I press it, and here you're going to see three little thingies on the left side of the terminal, which say pressed, right? You see the brackets that say pressed. Now I'm going to release the key, and then you're going to see a notification, which I will tell you what that's about later on. That's just to display the function of the key. But anyway, that's separate. Right now, what you just saw there was pressed and released for the Copilot key itself. So now what I'm going to do is carefully close out this window. So I'm going to press Alt W, which is going to close it out. Now look over here. Now you can ignore all of this. This stuff doesn't matter. What you want to take a look at is this part. So WL keyboard. You want to take a look at the key and the state okay so from here you need to take a look at this stuff okay the released part is basically just the key being released okay so now if you take a look at what's going on right over here you will find that there are indeed three keys being pressed and not just one those keys are super l shift l and control r so yeah it's completely taken over the right control to the point where it's only reduced to a former shell of its past right it's reduced to something that cannot even be accessed anymore now previously if you like navigating around the terminal and basically deleting words using control backspace you could do that when you actually had the control key but then now you don't anymore so you would have to perform other gimmicks like pressing control but then the left control and then backspace in order to get rid of a word yeah it's quite cumbersome but anyway if you take a look at me actually closing the window, you can see that I press the Alt key and then W. So as soon as I press W, the window is closed and so it doesn't pick up on the W. But regardless, the this is what it's supposed to look like if it's just one key that's being pressed. So that's the first thing that you should know about the Copilot key. Okay, it's not just one key being pressed, it's three keys being pressed simultaneously, which are the left shift, the left control, or actually the right control, as well as the super. The order doesn't matter too much. You just have to know that the three keys are being pressed simultaneously. Now, the next thing, okay, that we need to do is bind it in a certain way in order for it to work. You can't just bind this key bind willy nilly, just like you would bind anything else, okay? Now, you can try that, but then what you're going to come across, just as I did, okay, is that you're going to fail. It's not going to work. So you need to figure out a way to bind it in such a way that you're actually able to get a notification like this whenever the copilot key is pressed, if you so chose. Okay, and that actually has something to do with the way that you define keybinds in Hyperland's config itself. So let's go over to the Hyperland wiki to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's go into the configuring section. Inside here, we'll go into binds. Okay, and here you want to scroll down and you should see a section here that says binding mod keys only so this part is extremely important and make sure to keep this in mind because even if you try and do something like this okay super shift control and then you try and let's say pass something like a over here it's not going to work of course not all a's that seems to be a disaster anyway you try and do something like this it's not going to work okay the reason why is because you're only trying to bind mod keys right because you're not using any other letter, you're not using Z or P or L or any other letter on the keyboard, you're using mod keys only, so you have to follow this syntax. So to only bind mod keys, you need to use the target mod mask with the activating mod and the R flag. So two things are important. Make sure to follow syntax like this, okay? And also make sure to add R there after bind. So the entire line is supposed to look like this. Bind R is super shift control, control R, and then exec. So 
just so that you understand, I'm going to type this line out by hand. You can just type this along with me so that you also can get an idea of how exactly this works. Because trust me, I've been coding for quite a while now. It's been about five or six years. And the only way that you can learn code is honestly, if you take a look at whatever code that you're taking a look at, whether it be from a YouTube video or whether it be from a tutorial, a course that you've bought, anything, okay? You need to take a look at the code and you need to go back to your own code, a code editor and then you need to type out every single character on your own. Use autocomplete as minimally as you can because you don't want it getting in the way. The best way in order for you to become a skilled programmer and actually be able to do stuff when you're in the terminal and when you're actually in a working environment is to build up muscle memory so that you actually, one, remember the syntax, and two, you're not lost looking for the syntax every single time, which really wastes a lot of time and prevents you from getting to that 10x developer level. So do what I'm doing here and then just copy every single character that I'm pasting over here, that I'm typing over here, so that you can understand what each step of the bind is actually supposed to do. So bind R, as we just mentioned, we need to add the R flag in order for enabling the function of binding mod keys only. Okay, so bind R. Now here, what we're going to do is recall the buttons that were pressed simultaneously as soon as we pressed on the copilot key. So that would be something like this. Okay, that would be super, super, shift, and right control. Okay, super shift control. Great. Now, if you look here, super alt and then alt L, this is the syntax that we need to follow along with exec and whatever else we need to execute. Okay, so with that pattern in mind, our bind is going to look like super shift control. Okay, now you type control R here because we're activating right control and exec. Let's just say I want to execute a notification. So that would be something like notify send copilot key pressed, copilot key pressed, and something like rebind copilot key, rebind copilot key to get rid of this war warning. And then I give an exclamation mark just for that extra pizzazz. So now if I write changes and press the copilot key again, you should see that this notification is what you see over here. And by the way, if you want to get notifications like this, okay, with this kind of styling along with a blurred background and all of this good stuff and not just that but then also get a notification daemon like this where all of the notifications get sent over here and they get stacked not just that but also build a custom theme switcher where all you have to do is just choose your favorite theme between a list of a bunch of different themes and basically watch as your entire setup adapts to that one particular theme Right? If you want to build something like this on your own without having to watch 283 different YouTube tutorials without learning a single thing that actually teaches you about how the setup works, if you want to avoid all that, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. It's a program with over 10 hours of video training that I've compiled that helps you do exactly this. And in there, I teach you the exact same thing that I'm teaching you over here in the sense that my teaching style is the same. So whenever I explain stuff, I explain and I go out of my way to type every single little bit of the code and I force you to type along with me so that you understand how exactly your setup works and you're not just grasping at straws trying to get help from anybody and everybody trying to fix your setup. And so that you can build your own dot files that people want to copy instead of monkey see, monkey do copying other people's dot files. In fact, if I were to show it to you, this is what it looks like. Okay, as you can see over here, there is quite a lot of content. Some of the videos here are almost three hours long. Like for example, this theme switchers module. If I show you this video alone is two hours long and it took me, took me about a week to create, right? Just completely making this module from scratch. Here I cover what theme switchers actually are, the different kinds, how to set up wallpaper based theme switching. So in case you wanted to take a color from your wallpaper and use that to theme your setup, you can do that. Or of course you can choose between different wallpapers and choose a custom theme like the one that you see here. So if you wanted to change your wallpaper to be a corny one like this one, or to be a more minimalist one, like the one that you see here, you could absolutely do that for any theme that you so preferred. If I chose Tokyo Night and I wanted to change the theme for something like cafe, I could do that with a transition that explains the contrast between theme changing and wallpaper changing. All in all, pretty sweet stuff. And of course, all of this, I teach you how to do, so you're not just left gawking at another tutorial that doesn't actually show you anything. In fact, if I show you the code part, that's right about here. So here is where I explain each of the code that goes into making something like this. So if you want 
to learn how to make a setup like this one and not just stare at other people's setups on r slash unix point you can go ahead click the first link in the description and check out the program now that is pretty much it for ai chat <laughs> or actually ai chat is one of the use cases that i was going to use this copilot key for now if you notice ai chat right here is a program that allows you to do ai stuff now if i ask you who are you it's going to tell me that it's an AI that's created by Google. Yeah, so it's an LLM that's trained by Google. This LLM is actually Gemini 2.5 Flash, if I'm not wrong. So I just configured it today. And I was in the process of setting up the Copilot key to work with an LLM. So there's a couple of different ways that you can go about this. I was still in the process of configuring it. But if you were to venture out into creating an AI assistant for yourself, okay, without having to resort to Quickshell or AGS or Ignis or Fabric or whichever AU or whichever other widget system that's out there, okay, if you just want to keep things simple, light, minimal, you can do that with certain tools like AI Chat over here. So what I was figuring out today was going to be how to switch to a special workspace. Like if I show you right here, Okay, so basically, if I were to switch to a special workspace and then have AI chat open there, the copilot key is just to just supposed to open that particular workspace if the AI chat window is open or not open. Basically, something like that, right? It's just creating or adding AI functionality to this copilot key, which is what it was supposed to do in the first place, right? That. You can either do it with AI chat, just as I showed you, or you can do it with something called chatbox. That's actually Discord. This too, by the way, changes themes. So if I wanted to show you what it looks like to change your Discord theme, I could do that with something like Everforest. And as you can see, the Discord theme adapts immediately as well. But that's separate. So let me show you what Chatbox looks like. The Chatbox is an Electron app that basically acts as a client for multiple different LLMs. So right now I have configured it to use Gemini 2.5 Flash. And so if I were to type anything over here, like, hello, who are you? It would give me the same result that 2.5 flash gave me the other time so let's just pick 2.5 flash here tada, and it's just going to give me the same thing yes deeply thought for absolutely zero seconds <laughs> and it tells me that it's a large language model that's pretty much it so that is what you can do by rebinding the copilot key of course you can read the rest of the wiki of the keybinds and for yeah, basically just the keybinds. And you can also check out a video I've made before as to how you can use keybinds, right? Specifically to do stuff like this. So if you want, you can check that video out. And that's pretty much it. That is how you can rebind your copilot key to go from a useless key that Microsoft shoved down your manufacturers and your throat to actually being a key of some purpose. And also, if you want to learn how to make custom theme switchers like this one, and not simply gawk at other people's setups and make something of your own that you actually like and love and are able to troubleshoot in case something goes wrong, go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.